struggling to reconcile with motherhood. <laughs> hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I am not going to make this intro long. As you can see from the title of the video, um, it's not a pleasant one. <clears throat> Pardon me. If you are new to the channel, my name is Jess Lee. I hope you'll be joining the family by pressing the red subscribe button. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for the continued support. Um, please make sure to press the notification bell so that you are aware every time I upload a new video. Shab. Guys, so today I feel like crap. This is why I'm coming to you guys bare as I am because... I'm struggling. I'm struggling to reconcile with motherhood. <laughs> and that is the honest truth. Um, I was ranting on my WhatsApp status um, this morning around four or five o'clock because my son was having a very difficult night. Um, and I really was frustrated because I'm tired. And so, um, I went on to Twitter and I came across this tweet. I'll put it over here. And basically this lady was like, I really want to talk about my frustrations and I'm paraphrasing, um, with regards to motherhood, but I'm scared because people will say I hate kids. And I think that's the fear that we have as mothers, especially new mothers to the experience that we don't have a safe space to air our grievances or speak about our discontent when it comes to motherhood because I guess the old generation has really made it seem like it's what we're born to do you know um it's innate and it's easy for us it comes easy for us when in reality, that's not really the truth of the matter. Um, and I'm learning this <clears throat> every single month. I have shared my birthing story and how traumatic that was um, because I was not prepared for it. And I shared that story so that any person who is going to fall pregnant at some point who's already pregnant, not to instill fear in you, but to say, this might happen to you. Every mom has a different experience. This is just my own. And it's a, it's a piece of the big puzzle of pregnancy, of giving birth, of motherhood. And if we happen to share the same story, just be prepared, you know. But I but today I, I, I wanted to speak about the not so cute side of motherhood, guys. And before I go into it, I want to make a couple of concessions. One, I love my son. I would not trade my son for the world. I'm happy to be a mom, okay? Secondly, I am frustrated in my journey of motherhood. And if I could go back and make the choice again, I think I would take a couple more minutes to think about it <laughs> um, and that's just the truth third I do not regret having my son I do not regret anything that I'm going through I very rarely regret anything that happens in my life because I've come to learn that it is there to build me and these lessons that I go through because I'm a healer and a teacher that I have to go through these things to speak on them, to teach on them and to heal them. So although it's hard, I do not regret anything that I go through, anything that happens to me. So guys, the first thing I want to speak about that I've experienced in the last four months of motherhood is one postpartum depression. It's not spoken about enough it's scary you know the stories that some women have to share with regards to the depression they go through post-birth 
And I think we need to, again, create safe spaces and normalize having these conversations about motherhood so that other moms do not feel inadequate when these things happen to them just because they think nobody else is going through it. I think it's important that we speak about them, that we put them out there, that we say, you're not alone. It's not okay that you're going through this, but you're not alone. And there's a silver lining, basically, on the other side of it. Right. So I didn't really go through postpartum depression, and I'll tell you why. So naturally, um, if you watch my videos, you would know that I'm someone that was clinically de um, that was diagnosed with clinical depression, um, and it's a constant battle. And so, I was able to cope with the emotions that came with post birth because my birth thing experience was traumatic, and it triggered a lot of things that could have put me in a really really bad mental space but because I have the tools to work through and I can identify when something is coming up to the surface that it was easier for me to pull myself back and 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 center myself because remember when you're dealing with a newborn you're not sleeping at all right so and it's a new experience and sometimes you don't do things right sometimes you don't know what you're doing wrong and that can be frustrating because it can bring up those feelings of inadequacy and for me specifically a trigger point is failure like i struggled with failure a lot in my life and so sometimes that triggers depression and i feel like i'm failing or i'm out of control of something i i panic and i go into a space of of anxiety and depression and so when your child is not you know responding to what is supposed to be naturally innate to you you feel like you're you're incapable of being a mother and that can bring up some really really just nasty emotions and it can cause a a disconnection with your child with the world with yourself and I think there was an evening where I was laying in bed and, and I was just crying because I'm just like, I'm so tired. I'm in pain, but I have to show up for this human being that I made who didn't ask to be here, you know. And I, I just remember crying in bed and, you know, trying not to be loud because my husband was right next to me. But obviously he heard me and, and he held me and he said, babe, just know that we're here to support you and you're not doing this alone and it's okay and he said listen i'm gonna book you into a spa you know so you can have time to relax and don't worry we'll take care of the baby it's okay because i'm scared now that you are you might be going into a space of depression and that you might have postpartum depression and i think just having that moment of being able to speak about it with someone who was able to also identify that there might be a problem was it saved me you know and i quickly was able to get out of it so if you are a mom or you're going to be a mom please know that that is something that is real read about it do your research I'm not saying call it upon yourself, but I'm saying be aware that it's something that might happen. You could be the happiest person throughout your pregnancy. And when you just see that child, it just might not click. And society tells you that it's just supposed to click. You're just supposed to love this human and be extremely happy. And it's that's not always the case. So I want you to know that postpartum depression is real. I want you to know that it's okay. I want you to know that you're not the only one that's going through it. And I would love for you to accept that you are going through it so that you can get help for it. Okay. And then the second thing that I want to speak about, which is a bit on the lighter side of things, but is just as concerning, is this new notion that we have. Yeah. The snapback you know we have to snap back as moms 
um and i won't lie you know before i was in this situation myself i was quick to compliment new moms on how quick they snap back or how well they carry their pregnancies and listen guys everybody's different but also it's just tough <laughs> it's just tough like the pressure for me personally i was really like my body was coming back you know um i was a, a, on a good day a, a nice 32 with a nice bum you know and a flat stomach and then after you fall pregnant then you give birth the stomach is not okay you know the body's changed i mean the physical changes on my body are drastic and that this is not me lying like even looking at myself in the mirror naked is is a bit tricky because i've changed so much um i have stretch marks i've never had stretch marks i have cellulite i mean i had cellulite but it wasn't like out here but now it's out here you know what i mean um i had perky boobs my boobs are you know combing local right now they are flapjacks and this is something that I also discussed with my husband and he's been understanding of just how I see my body. Um, even getting intimate is, is tricky. But I was, my body was really coming back, you know, um, I think about four weeks, three, four weeks into me giving birth because I was breastfeeding, which does help in terms of losing weight. But I stopped breastfeeding a month in and the weight has just piled up you can see i look different i'm bigger than i i was right and because i'm not breastfeeding anymore my boobs are not here they're not cute you know um the bum is wonky it's just and everything kind of requires me to put in time and to exercise and i'm not an I'm not a person that's ever had to exercise in my life. I'm not going to lie. God has just been good to me in that I've just never had to. And I've been happy with my body, you know, um, over the years. But I took for granted the fact that once I was, had fallen pregnant and given birth, I would need to work to get to my ideal body. So the snapback is not happening at all. And that's because I'm just not doing anything about it. And I'm not doing anything about it. I, I really, <clears throat> you know, wanted to try yoga and Pilates. And just do a few exercises here and there. But there is no time, guys. There's no time for myself to do all of these things. Literally, the time I get to myself is at 11 o'clock when I put my son to sleep for the night. And I take my self-care bath, which is the only time I get to be myself and center myself again, which is very, very important. I, I, that's my ritual. You know, I need to take a bath so that I can show up for him. And so the snapback is, is let's, let's just let go of that idea. Don't pressure yourself. For, if your body snaps back, good for you. We are happy for you, mom. But if your body is not snapping back, you're not the only one. And it's okay. And people will learn to understand that you are a mother and there are just things that are just not gonna... Oh my gosh, this guy is awake. You see what I mean? There are things that are just not gonna happen overnight because you're a mother and you need to show up for a human being right so let go of the idea of the snapback if it happens for you god is good if it doesn't happen push up push up it's okay and then guys on 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 the part of like the physical changes i literally have chronic back pain it doesn't go away it's just there every minute of every day i have back pains it's really bad. So when I when you're telling me to exercise, I'm just like, do you know what I'm going through? Don't do it. 
let's not give moms unsolicited advice at all like nothing unless she asks you for the advice don't do it leave it it's not your place and then last but not least guys the exhaustion that comes with being a mother the frustration that comes with the exhaustion there's i don't care how present your husband your partner your wife is for the person who has given birth and primary caregiver of the child no one is going to understand exactly what you are going through nobody at all okay husbands will sleep through the night while you wake up in three hour intervals to feed a child to soothe a child and when they take over you still need to take over because they're just not doing the right thing you know weaponized incompetence is a thing like men just don't get it i'm sorry like they just don't get it and it's not that they're not helpful my husband is really helpful he tries but guys you're waking up in three hour intervals ne? you're soothing this child this child wants to constantly be here on you when you're breastfeeding it's even worse then you have to show up for yourself you have to still be your wife you have to clean your house you have to cook you have to show up for your job because you also have to pay bills so nobody is really coming to the party and saying yo i don't know how this lady does it it's just like yeah you're doing it like guys it's <laughs> like i'm i'm smiling but it's not like mm -mm. you can't even be sick like literally the most sleep that i've gotten is because i was sick and i still needed to show up in my in my illness like i would sleep half the day but then the child would cry to a point where you know that the father is just not going to know what to do so you need to do something it's really a lot and I think as moms, we need to have spaces where it is okay for us to vent and to say we are struggling and to say it's not easy. It's an uphill battle to be, to give birth to a child, but also be the caregiver of that child. It is tough. So check on new moms, check on old moms, check on moms. Because Asiko writes. Asiko writes. Honestly, like, surprise me with a spa day. Like, offer to babysit. I don't know. You know, you you were not there when I made my child. You owe me none of that. But if you care to do something for a mom, do let me know. Um what has been the most difficult thing for you as a mom to deal with personally that nobody else knows about let me know in the comment section moms it's okay okay make time for yourself i know it's difficult find 30 minutes where you can just be in the quiet where you can bring yourself back towards yourself where you can still hold on to your sanity because it's not easy for you and i get it now because I'm a mom. Okay, so we need to go through these things. But I just wanted to vent. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you made it this far, please do like the video. Press the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you are a new subby, please drop a heart in the comment section so that I can welcome you officially to the family. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share the video with a new mom, old mom, a mom. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hi. Hi. Hi.
Baba. Hi, Baba. Hello.